On April 3rd of 2018, I looked at the man that I loved for almost 10 years and I asked him, are you willing to accept the possibility that you have a mental illness? And he was staring at the ground when he answered, I have a mental illness. Are you willing to get help? Now I was asking Old Go just to give him that last shred of benefit of the enormous festering doubt. Because we'd been here before, many times. Like the time that he got so mad that he swung a tree over his head. Not a branch, not a shrub, a whole tree. And what would make you man enough to swing a tree? And every vein in his lean body was throbbing, and his blue eyes were like pulsars against his red face. Then there was the time that he tore all of his clothes off and ran naked down the road, past the alpaca farm, past the church with the white steeple, and it took weeks for us to get past that because it took weeks for those claw marks on his face and chest to heal. And people always ask me, why did you call him Old Goat? And the truth is, I called him that because that's what he called himself. And I never really got a clear answer as to why. And people used to tease me because I was actually older than him. But I found it more ironic that a man with such low self-esteem would embrace a nickname that in some circles would mean the greatest of all time. Because there was that one time that old goat chased me to my closet and I hid in a ball under my clothes while he took the door off the hinges. And when he came in, he crouched down and he screamed in my face and he spit on me. And he told me, just remember, I never laid a finger on you. Now, if any of my friends had told me that their partner was treating them this way, I'd have been like, oh, hell no. But it's amazing how different the standards are when we apply them to ourselves, right? It's kind of like the first and second time I was diagnosed with PTSD, and I was like, me? No. Those combat veterans, though, whew, they've been through some shit. And then there was the time that Old Goat threw a hot frying pan of sizzling food on the floor and it landed right next to one of the dogs. And I shoved him out the kitchen door and I locked it behind him. And he went to the living room window and I was sure that he was gonna punch through the glass. I mean, he told me that if I ever tried to keep him out, he'd find a way in. But he didn't. Instead, he looked me in the eye and he punched himself in the face. And he watched me watch him in horror as he jumped face first into his fist over and over and over again until I unlocked the door and I went outside and I put myself between his bloody hand and his bloody face to keep him from hurting himself anymore. I was afraid that he was gonna break back into the house, but he just kept breaking back into my heart. And thinking about it now, I can picture Old Goat smiling as he was bleeding into my hair that day because this was his moment of glory. This test meant everything to him. Would I sacrifice myself to protect him? And I proved that day and always that I would be his human shield. And he proved that he would use me to crash through life and not feel a thing. And by March of 2018, Old Code had come completely unraveled. And one of our dogs, had been seriously injured under what would be considered mysterious circumstances. And I was diagnosed with a rare form of vertigo called Mal de Debarcamon syndrome. So my life had become a spiral of spirals that were spiraling, spiraling out of control. And when a snowstorm threatened to shut us in together, when things were already so icy cold between us, I put it to Old Goat as warmly as I possibly could. Before the snow starts, I need you to talk to me or I need you to leave. Where do you expect me to go? Well, actually I expect you to talk to me, but if you choose otherwise, where you go is not my concern. And after throwing several tantrums, 
and doing the most dramatic load of laundry I have ever seen. Old Goat dragged his suitcase to the door, slammed it shut, and left. And I just wanted to scoop my brains out from the vertigo, so I did the next best thing. I took one of the Valium the doctor had given me, because that's the only treatment for MDDS. And I fell into an uncomfortable sleep until about 2 a.m., when I woke to the sound of my dogs whining downstairs and what sounded like footsteps. And I was dizzy from the vertigo, and I was groggy from the Valium, and now I was triggered with the kind of fear that I had never felt before. I dragged myself out of bed, and with a shaking hand, I dialed the nine and the one, and I tiptoed to the top of the stairs to listen. And my pulse was this hissing, static sound in my left ear, and every time my heart beat, my, right, my left eye saw these splotches of red and blue. And there was definitely movement downstairs in the living room. Was it old goat? And then I remembered the gun that was hidden in the closet right beneath me. A Glock Model 26 9mm pistol that I ended up with after dating in a military sniper. And I thought about selling that gun, but I just figured that if this one gun stayed hidden in my closet for the rest of my life, at least this one gun would never hurt anybody for at least that long. But had he gotten to it already? Could I get to it? And it was four cycles of the hissing static and the red and the blue before I felt sturdy enough to make it for that closet. And as soon as I lifted my foot on that last step, Old Goat jumped off the couch and screamed, What the fuck is your problem? And that hissing static just turned to a sizzle that burned from my hair to my toenails, like a fire burning down a network of power lines. And I went deaf in my left ear, and I went blind in my left eye. And apart from this rolling wave of throbbing, burning, surging pain in my arm and hand, I could not feel them. And I was certain that I was having a stroke as Old Goat screamed at me. And I can't tell you what he said. And I can't tell you how I responded. But I can tell you that he would never apologize for scaring me that night. He'd remind me that his name was on the lease and that he had every right to be there. And he would never accept any responsibility for the injury that I sustained, that I still feel today, because he never laid a finger on me. And that was my last straw. On April 3rd, when I asked Old Goat if he was willing to get help, it didn't matter what answer he gave because my plans to leave were already in place. I had to get better, and I couldn't do it with him. I knew I deserved better, but I knew I couldn't expect it from him. So I took the dogs and their stuff, and I packed a suitcase full of winter clothes because it was still snowing in April last year. I took my passport, my car title, and some cash that I'd saved up for either a vacation or an emergency, whichever came first. I took the ashes of my very first dog, Lucky, because I'd never been anywhere without her before. And I took Old Goat's face in my hands, like, and I kissed it like I would never see it again. <coughs> and I said, please take care of yourself. Make good choices. You deserve a good life. And I took off.